Make a cheerful noise unto the God of Jacob. Now the green maid rises from the buried grain. We that in darker many days has lain. Love lives again, and with the dead has been. Love is come again, like with that rising grave they laid him, love by hatred slain, thinking that he would never wake again. Laid in the earth like rain that sleeps unseen, love is come again like wheat arising. For he came at Easter like the risen grain. He that for three days in the grave had laid, raised from the dead, my living Lord is seen. Love is come again like wheat arising. When our hearts are wintry, grieving more in pain, your touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and dead have seen, love is come again like wheat arising. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord. from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. This holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Yes, Christ. 
Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. How good and how pleasant it is to live together in unity. How good and how pleasant it is to live together in unity. How good and how pleasant Pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the hand flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. How good and how pleasant it is to live together in unity. 
It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. How good and how pleasant it is to live together with unity. A reading from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. <clears throat> this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we're walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. If the villains of Holy Week are Judas and Peter, then the villain of Eastertide must be Thomas. Doubting Thomas, who earns his infamous title not even for anything particularly egregious that he does, but solely for being absent when Jesus happened to show up. It hardly seems fair that this is Thomas's reputation. The other disciples, huddled in their house with the doors locked in fear, don't get scolded. After all, their worst nightmare had come true. Their rabbi had been killed, and they were next. The movement was over. Indeed, there was no reason to hope. No reason to expect anything different. And did you notice that the doors are still shut? Probably locked, too, even after they have seen the Lord. Fear, not alleluias, is the commonplace response to Jesus' death and even the news of his apparent resurrection. Fear is where we left the women at the tomb in Mark's gospel on Easter Sunday. Good Friday was all they knew. After helplessly looking on from a distance, witnessing the execution of their teacher and friends, moving through the fog of grief and confusion over the days ahead, the women came to the tomb expecting death. More of the same. The movement was over. There was no reason to hope, no reason to expect anything different. For Thomas, the movement was over. Thomas had invested so much of his time, energy, and hope into this movement. A movement, John tells us, that he was once willing to risk his own life for. Several chapters earlier, when Jesus had learned that his dear friend Lazarus had died, it was Thomas who boldly insisted that the disciples join their teacher and friend on the journey to visit the bereaved family. Let us also go that we may die with him, Thomas declares. And then sometime later, when Jesus is offering his parting words to his disciples, it's Thomas who's the first to speak up. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Out of his deep concern for the movement that they have been building, it is Thomas, alone, who gives voice to what the other disciples were all surely feeling, but were maybe too timid to name. 
Is the movement over? What's going to happen to Jesus? What's going to happen to us? Far from doubting, Thomas had been bold in his faith and his willingness to follow Jesus, even to death. Thomas had been so committed to the movement that Jesus was building and rightfully nervous about the prospect of losing their leader and teacher and friend to an unknown place. Thomas, all the evidence tells us, was an exemplar of faith until everything that he put his faith into comes crashing down around him. No wonder Thomas isn't with the others. His teacher and friend had been arrested, tortured, and killed at the hands of a powerful empire like so many others who dared to question that empire's authority before him. The movement was over, done, dead. There was no reason to expect anything different. It was time to pick up the pieces and move on. The women were so afraid that they told no one. The other disciples were so afraid that they locked themselves in the house twice. Thomas was so afraid that he couldn't bring himself to stick around. Grief does weird things like that. And it is precisely into this atmosphere of fear, grief, and uncertainty that the risen Christ appears. Not with a demeaning new nickname for his doubting disciple, not with a reprimand for not believing unflinchingly in the resurrection that none of them had any reason to expect, not without any judgment or shame, but with words of promise and comfort. Peace be with you. Peace be with you in your fear that it's all over. Peace be with you when you have no reason to expect anything different. Peace be with you when you're afraid that the worst is yet to come. Peace be with you in all the doubts and questions along the way. Peace be with you. The movement is just beginning. Oh, 
Christ, you are the Lord of all. In this our Easter festival, for you will be our strength and shield from every weapon death can wield. All praise, O risen Lord, we give to you once dead, but now alive, to God the Father, equal praise, and God the Spirit, now we raise. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection, we pray to the Father. Receive our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter, we pray to the Father. Receive, Receive our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, we pray to the Father. Receive, Receive our, our prayer. That by God's power, <laughs> war and famine may cease through all the world, we pray to the Father. Receive, Receive our, our prayer. That God may reveal the light of the divine presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, to comfort the strengthen them, including those remaining now, silently or alive. We pray to the Father. Receive, Receive our, our prayer. prayer. That according to God's promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. We pray to the Father. Receive, Receive our, our prayer. prayer. That God may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon God's people, so that we may bear faithful witness to Christ's resurrection, we pray to the Father. Receive, Receive our, our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you.
thank you for reminding me that I have announcements. <laughs> and boy, do we have a lot of them. Um, but first, welcome to St. John's for the second Sunday of Easter. Easter, of course, is not just one day, but a whole season of 50 days, lasting from now until the day of Pentecost, to celebrate the resurrection and the victory of life over death. So whether you are worshiping with us here in person today or online, we are grateful for your presence with us, as always. The aforementioned number of announcements are all printed in your bulletin and in your e-news. Uh, you can take time to read most of those um, on your own if you have not already. Um, but just to highlight a couple, first is one that did not make it into the bulletin, but it is in the e-news. Um, the Crop Hunger Walk is coming up in just about a month's time on Sunday, May 5th. Um, and so if you would like to walk with St. John's, or if you would like to donate in support of the mission of the Crop Walk, uh, Karen Belinsky is the person to speak with. She's not here today, of course, but she will be here next week. Um, and she will be here uh, with donation sheets as well, and also more information if you want to sign up to participate with St. John's. It will be at a new location this year at St. Paul's Episcopal Church on Hackett Boulevard. Um, all of that information will be in the bulletin next week or in your e-news now if you go online. And then second, this is in your bulletin, um, but just to draw your attention to because it's exciting. Um, three weeks from today, Sunday, April 28th, we will have another opportunity similar to what we did in the fall to gather for brewed theology, as it's called. Uh, this time at the Warbler Brewery in Del Mar, which is one of my very favorite places. The brewery, not necessarily Del Mar, although Del Mar is lovely. <laughs> Delmar is lovely, but the Warbler Brewery is lovelier. Um, going to get in trouble with all the people from Delmar now. Um, we will gather uh, that day, the 28th, at 5 p.m. for a time of fellowship and conversation, this time around the timely Easter topic, afterlife resurrection, body, soul, and what's next. Daunting, right? You've been launched into an existential crisis now. Um, if beer is not your thing, they do have non-alcoholic options, as well as, some, as um, including some soft drinks. And you can bring food in uh, to the warble. They don't, they don't serve their own food, um, but you can bring food in with you. Um, so it should be a good time. Please join us for that on the 28th. Lots more in your bulletin online. Uh, for now, we walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven and said unto the women, He whom ye seek is risen as he said, Alleluia. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim a cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all. Unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, ruler of heaven and earth, Day by day, you shower us with blessings. 
as you have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. 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 <clears throat> The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your heart, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. 
Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Rejoicing in the victory of the resurrection, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, the gifts of God for all God's people. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Reach hither thy hand, and behold the print of the nails. Alleluia. And be not faithless, but believing. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Please stand. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith and the blessing of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.